Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. This time for Ash. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for a film that has like three or four titles. There's Road Force, Renegade Force, Counter Force, EOA Team on 1998. And it's one of those films that it's on YouTube for free. It's an easy watch because of the two actors. You have Michael Rooker, our good guy. And you got Robert Patrick, our bad guy. I mean, yeah, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer versus T-1000 from Terminator 2. You got Cliff Hainer, the top land. You got just two wonderful actors. The story is okay. It's simple, but okay. It's Robert Patrick is a platoon SWAT leader. And, or swap platoon leader, I should say, he leads a group of ready day cops that are a vigilante force that go against the bad guys. In the beginning, they go into this mansion, they kill everybody, men and women, then you find out they were part of uh, business of porn, especially with people very, very young. There's another bit where they take care of people in this club, where there's mobsters and such in there. So while that's happening, you have Michael Rooker who goes after Renegade cops. He's part. He work, He's of the FBI, and he teams up with this female cop to look into who's doing these. Who's doing these things? Pretty much. And it's one of those films, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot of subplots going on. Part of the, the only one I could think of is there's a younger cop that Michael Rooker might bust because of excessive force, but ultimately he doesn't, and he gives some leeway. And it's like, hey, listen, I gave you leeway. Yeah, I gave me something, but he doesn't. So... So what makes the film work is Michael Rooker and uh, Robert Patrick going toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. They have their own scenes where they work well. Um, being greedy, I wish we could have seen more scenes with the two of them together, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And the action is pretty decent. SWAT type of action. You know, it's not going to be Stone Cold with Brian Bosworth, so... I, I guess you say the action is trying to be a bit more realistic in, realistic in terms of what the actual tactics would be if SWAT did these things. They even have texts at the end of the film that real SWAT techniques were used in the making of this movie and thank, we want to thank them for teaching us and for their help. And it, like you don't get a whole lot of backstory with the characters, other than like Robert Patrick, you know, hates the criminals. There's a bit when he's a cop where he's come across this guy. You read that piece of shit? Get the fuck down! Drop the bag! You read that piece of shit? They trying to help this lady, even though that's not the protocol. But it's like he, she's dying here. So on one hand, he means well, but of course, like these guys, they goes too far. But at the same time, like, it's a movie that's fine, but kind of accepts being fine and nothing more. There's nothing in terms of the performances, as in, it's not the actor's fault, but in terms of the writing of the characters, they really try to push it to the next level, in terms of giving these big emotional scenes, or dramatic scenes, or big tension scenes between these two where they go at each other verbally sparring with each other because you have these two intense actors I think you get a lot of leeway from that and I think it kind of dropped the ball with that I think they could have done more with these two guys going toe to toe verbally with each other more and more hostile with each other I say it's more about Michael Rooker and the girl trying to figure out 
who these guys are and what their next target is. You get a decent action scene at an airport where Michael Rooker is with his team and they're geared up and they're behind his armored vehicle trying to get closer. And they go through the badges claim and to the terminal and like I said, it's not going to be Terminator. It's not going to be you know, big budget action. But it's handled fairly well enough. It wasn't confusing. There wasn't a lot of shaky cam. There's no CGI. So you get some nice squibs in there. A little explosive. Explosive to portray the people being shot. And it goes at a nice enough pace, it's not too boring. I would say it's not boring at all. I would say the finale had some things that were kind of surprising about it. And then some things that was kind of uh, mediocre about it. I would say if it had more of I guess the typical bigger bombastic B movie type of action finale. Granted, that would have been more of a trope. Granted, that would have been more cliche. But I guess personally, I would have probably enjoyed this a bit more. Because I could kind of appreciate that it doesn't follow some of the typical tropes. The again, spoilers. Like the guy that helped that Michael Rooker helped out, maybe you would assume, okay, well, since Michael Rooker helped him out of a jam, he'll help out Michael Rooker and maybe Robert Patrick will find out and either shoot the guy or you know, kill the guy because we don't allow traitors in our army or soldiers. What are you doing? No, that never happens. The guy's with Robert Patrick all the way. Or you think, okay, Robert Patrick and his men, there's going to be this back and forth shootout where the finale takes place at City Hall and they're both going to be shooting. Michael Rooker is going to be picking people off. No, it's not the case. Again, maybe the director was trying to go more of a realistic angle to it. Which, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that, but I think there's a time and a place and I don't know if this film needed that for this kind of movie. Because Michael Rooker is trying to, and his men are trying to shoot, but most of his men get taken out. Then the female cop tries to help out, but then almost in, within 30 seconds, she gets shot and killed. Which was surprising. It was surprising they didn't go, try to push in a love story between the female cop and Michael Rooker. It was even more surprising that she gets killed. Because you think, okay, you know, she... That's, that just doesn't usually happen. And there's not some traumatic moment where he's holding her in his arms and stay with me and she has final words. No. She gets shot. He's trying to pull out. Come on, we gotta go. Come on, she's dead. We gotta go. And then they go and then you never see her again. She's dead. So yeah, I kind of appreciate, okay, it's a bit of a different way of doing it. It makes it feel more fresh. And so Michael Rooker, he gets more men... And then Robert Patrick and his men, all they do is they just decide to go outside. They form like a barrier, but they just go outside firing weapons. And pretty much get shot and killed. They take a few of Michael Rooker's men out, to be fair. But it's like, okay, here's a nameless person, shoot a nameless person. Here's a nameless person, shoot a nameless person. I think Michael Rooker gets one of them. And that's the guy that he tried to give leeway to who said, fuck you, I'm with Robert Patrick. I forget that actor's name. I know I've seen him and stuff. I think his last name is Mandalore, but I don't know which one. So I, I think it's him. Could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But it just kind of felt really blase by the ending they're out in the open and then Michael Rooker shoots the one guy then Robert Patrick's walking towards them hold you fire now shoot they shoot Robert Patrick Michael Rooker finishes him off 
what are you doing? You can't do that. Michael Rooker walks away like he quits. And then the movie's over. So it definitely, on one end, it does give a bit more of a, maybe a harder edge in a weird, well, I don't know. It, it gives a bit of a different feel to the ending compared to other movies like this. Where it's either you have your hero and the partner or love interest or both. They share some words and they walk away and they share some more words. Let's go have dinner. Let's go have this and that. No, not the case. So it definitely just feels more of a tragic ending in a way just because you see a lot of Michael Rooker's been been killed the female cop been killed almost nonchalant like that's just how it happened so at least the idea what the director's going for to be less cliche and I do appreciate that but at the same time I don't know if I would say it was surprising on an entertainment level and action-wise, it kind of wasn't that exciting. It's just person firing, person firing. There's really no style. There's no style in terms of direction. I'm not saying it has to be flashy direction, but just, just kind of made it feel a bit of a whimper of an ending. I don't know if I want to say anticlimactic, but... Oh, he's kind of hoping for this big, I don't know, even, what, a firefight between Robert Patrick and Michael Rooker, we're going back and forth, or maybe a fist fight, but yeah, maybe that would be deemed too escapism, too over the top, or too B-movie, and the director's probably going for something else more co real, but I don't know. At the same time, that, that level of escapism is the reason why that gets remembered a lot throughout the years. At the end of the day, I would say I liked it. It was okay. If you like these two actors, it's easily worth a watch. Like I said, it's easy to digest in terms of enter, you know entertainment. It's short film, hour and 20-some minutes long. You get to see two actors do their thing and show how talented they are. Like I said, I think um, there's a bit more meat to the bones that her characters could have been showcased to give even, get even more out of these actors. I wish the ending did go more for the bombastic. Like you think of, I think of City Hall, I think of Stone Cold, and that has style. Whether it be Brian Bowser shooting the motorcycle and it flies off and it hits this helicopter and the people get hit, they get blasted up, and you see Brian Bosworth, they push a guy through a window and. It may be over the top, but people remember that more. And granted, they probably had a bit of a bigger budget compared to this movie, but still, even other direct-to-video films, like, I guess, you know, Robert Patrick, you got Zero Tolerance, and some of these other PM Entertainment movies. There's a part of the kind of wishes it went more towards that than the more real. But, like I said, you appreciate what it was doing. It was okay. It was decent, but I think could have been more with the the two these two talented actors involved. But I say it was at the very least a decent time waster. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.